We, we simply don't know whether we can make them not want to take over and not want to hurt us. Do you think we can? Do you think it's possible to train superintelligence? I don't think it's clear that we can, so I think it might be hopeless. But I also think we might be able to. And it'd be sort of crazy if people went extinct because we couldn't be bothered to try. If that's even a possibility, how do you feel about your life's work? Because you were... Yeah. Um, it sort of takes the edge off it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the idea is going to be wonderful in healthcare and wonderful in education and wonderful... I mean, it's going to make call centres much more efficient. Though one worries a bit about what the people who are doing that job now do. It makes me sad. I don't feel particularly guilty about developing AI like 40 years ago because... At that time, we had no idea that this stuff was going to happen this fast. We thought we had plenty of time to worry about things like that. They, when, you, when you can't get the AI to do much and you want to get it to do a little bit more, you don't worry about this stupid little thing is going to take over from people. You just want it to be able to do a little bit more of the things people want. It's not like I knowingly did something thinking, this might wipe us all out, but I'm going to do it anyway. But it is a bit sad that it's not just going to be something for them. So I feel I have a duty now to talk about the risks. And if you could play it forward and you could go forward 30, 50 years and you found out that it led to the extinction of humanity, and if that does end up being, <laughs> being the outcome. Well, if you played it forward and it led to the extinction of humanity, I would use that to tell people to tell their governments that we really have to work on how we're going to keep this stuff under control.